Piles are structural elements that transfer the applied loads from the superstructure to a dense, deeper strata. But if the pile is actually loaded, how do you transfer all these loads to the surrounding soil? And if the pile is laterally loaded, as in this case, how do you find the maximum moments and shear along the piles? What are the stresses in the soil? And once you find the maximum moment and shear, how do you design the reinforcement? What are the code provisions that apply to pile? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to discuss the analysis and design of piles, particularly concrete piles, such as drill piers or overcast piles. Let's get started. Piles are members mostly loaded actually, but often they support lateral loads and moments as well. The typical loads are dead, life, roof life, snow, all these gravity loads, as well as lateral loads such as wind and seismic loads. Bridge structures supported on piles may transfer also air pressures, collision, and source charges. For actually loaded piles, the loads are transferred in two ways, skin friction and end bearing. If the supporting soil media is primarily granular soils, then the end bearing will govern. For cohesive soils, a larger portion of the support will come from skin friction along the pile. To increase the end bearing capacity, a drill pier can have a bell at the tip. On the other hand, the lateral load and moment applied at the pile head are resisted by the soil surrounding the pile. This can be modeled as a series of soil springs, conveniently spaced along the pile, called the PY springs, as in the Beeman Elastic Foundation. The lateral displacement Y in the pile causes a soil reaction P in the opposite direction. As shown in this image, the soil springs are non-linear, reflecting the actual behavior of the soil. Furthermore, the structural properties of the springs vary with the depth as well. So the springs are non-linear, and in addition, they vary with depth. If we consider also that the pile are mostly embedded in a multiple layers of soil with different properties, then all this greatly complicates the mathematical solution. The appropriate upper and lower bound calculations of the soil properties have been considered in the software. For that purpose, we used some published PY curves for different soil conditions. Let's go to Adip Foundation to see how it performs the lateral analysis as described. I have created an example in Adip Foundation. This is a drill pier, 36 inches diameter and 80 feet long. Head condition is fixed. And I have entered some rebars. We'll go through here in a minute. If we go to the loads tab, I have specified some loads. To simplify the calculations, I selected the first option, a pre-combined loads. So I enter some service loads and some factors loads. In service, I enter a shear, 70 kips. And in factor, I enter an actual load, 350 kips, and a shear, or lateral load, 100 kip. Since we are specifying a pre-combined load, which is just one combination, then the lateral analysis is very fast, it's instantaneous. So the program gives the results immediately can be sorted also by factor or by service loads. These are the results for factor loads, and these are the results for service loads, combination service. Graphically, if we go to the graph tab, VMD diagrams, here we can see the same results graphically, the shear diagram, the moment diagram, and the deflection. This is for service loads, so we, if we are interested in the factor loads, we change here to factor, and then the numbers have changed accordingly. If we select instead a set of load cases, we select the second. Here we can see that the bottom here at the top, it says recalculate and turns red. That means that the program is to recalculate to show the correct results. The purpose of this button is to save time Basically, running the lateral analysis implies to run all these load cases in the load combinations, and the analysis takes about 30 seconds. So it's recommended to enter all the input information, and then at the very end, just click on the recalculate button to avoid this delay. If we enter, for example, dead load, 250 kips, 
then live load, 200 kips. Then we go to wind and enter some information here, some actual loads and 100 kips lateral. If we select another step in wind, another option, say a step two, and I have entered also some additional loads. In the same way, we can enter some seismic or any other loads first, and then at the very end, I'm gonna click on the recalculate button. And then after about 30 seconds, the program finishes the analysis and we have the results. The controlling load combination is in service is dead plus 0.6 wind. If we go to the factor combinations, then the controlling load combination is 1.2 dead plus 0.5 life plus 0.5 roof life plus wind. In the table, we have exactly the same controlling load combination and the tabulated values. If we go to the detail tab, we can see a detailed set of calculations step by step, group by topic with exposed formulas and references to the ACI code. In the lateral analysis section, we can see here the applied loads and then the maximum forces along the pile, maximum shear, maximum moment, and then the lateral deflection for service loads. Graphically, go to the graph tab, the shear and moment diagram and the deflections. We go to the interaction diagram. The program generates the interaction diagram as a column, then shows the point representing the applied loads. This point is inside the usable area of the interaction diagram. Therefore, the design is adequate. Let's go to the geometry tab. Some engineers like to add a center bar full length. If that's the case, just check this box, and then you can specify here the bar size that you prefer to add at the center. For example, if we select a number eight bar, then the program immediately adds this number eight bar at the center of the pile. The interaction diagram changes accordingly to reflect this additional rebar effect. Let's go back to the detail tab. The reinforcement design provisions in ACI are summarized in the table 18.13.5.7.1. Let's go there to see this table. The minimum requirements of steel design in the code are more stringent in areas of high seismicity due to the higher ductility demands in those areas. Drill piers require longitudinal rebars when designed to resist oblique loads or when the maximum factor moment exceeds the design cracking moment. The table 18.13.571 in ACI summarizes the minimum reinforcement requirement in concrete piles. For example, where structures are classified as seismic design category C, which is this column over here, the minimum steel area ratio is 0 0.0025, and the minimum cage length is the larger of L over 3, 10 feet, 3 diameters, or the depth at which the factor moment is equal to 0 0.4, the cracking moment. The spiral spacing at the top three diameters is the smaller of six inches or eight diameter of the longitudinal bars. Special provisions apply for seismic design category D and higher, which is these two additional columns in the table. For class E and F, which is the most stringent, the minimum steel area ratio is 0 0.005 and a full cage length is required with some more stringent spiral spacing as well. For site class D and lower, moderate minimum requirements between the two cases are applicable to concrete piles. Let's go back to ASDIP Foundation to see how this is implemented. ASDIP Foundation checks all the code provisions regarding reinforcement design in concrete piles. In the detail tab under the reinforcement design section, this structure has been classified as seismic design category C, site class C. The program calculates the cracking moment and then there are some checks in the longitudinal rebars. The minimum number of rebars is six in this case, so it's passing. It checks the minimum steel area, 0 0.0025, and also the maximum steel area. Both checks are passing. It also calculates the center bar tensile strength, and then it calculates the depth at which the factor moment equals 0 0.4 cracking moment. This will control the minimum cage length. 
Then it calculates the development length for the connection at the pile cap. Here in the transfer steel section, it checks several provisions. The minimum bar diameter, 3 eighths, is passing. And then the volumetric ratio according to the spiral spacing. This check is also passing. Then it checks the maximum top spacing and the minimum top length as well as the maximum bottom spacing. Finally, in the graph tab, construction tab, we can see a pile elevation of the design pile with all the rebars that we just specified and checked. If you like the software, please visit the website www.zipsoft.com and download the free 15-day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.